beside him was his son, Ali Asghar. We find this Abdullah al Rabia is a great sacrifice. Do you know why? Someone once came to me and said, Sayyid Ammar, Abba Abdullah, why did he let his companions go first and not his family? I said, That's the, that is the honor of Abba Abdullah. That is the greatness of Abba Abdullah. He said, What do you mean? He said, Surely Abba Abdullah, he's let his companions. Why didn't he let Ali Akbar and Qas and all them go? I said, Abba Abdullah, he was telling his companions that if I'm not going to give you water here, I want to be the first to serve you water from the pool of Kotha. I cannot give you, and I, Hussein, want to serve you. I want to make sure you are served with water before anyone else is served. That when Abba Abdullah's body lies on the ground of, of Karbala, some people say, why was it three days before he is buried? Because so many angels needed to say salam. That three days was fitting for Abba Abdullah. How many angels wanted to come and say salam that three days on the plains of Karbala is fitting. And that's why with Ali Azghar, Abba Abdullah, he had Abbas, and he had Qasim, and he had Akbar, and he had Habib and Muslim. He had all his great companions. Why did he leave Ali Azghar till the end? He wanted to show what? That this six month old is not as strong as Abbas. But I want to show you just how much I am giving away because my Lord is saying, You will never achieve righteousness until you as a father or you as a mother sacrifice everything that you have and that which you love. How hard is it for a mother when she has to sacrifice her son? How hard is it for Qasim's mother? How hard is it for Akbar's mother? But at least with those mothers, their sons bid them farewell. How about when your son is groaning because of the thirst of Karbala? Do you know the hadith what they say? They say Abdullah al-Radhi, he was not even crying, he was groaning. Why? Because a person who cries normally has been given some water to have the energy. But he didn't have any water, his mouth was dry. There is an incident that what happened was on the way towards Karbala, as they were leaving Medina, Fatima Sukhra, this daughter of Abba Abdullah, who's not even present in her father's final moments. Imagine that. At least some of us may be present next to our father's deathbed. Imagine when you don't know whether your father's body is on the ground in Karbala in pieces. You imagine, brothers and sisters. When they are leaving towards Karbala, this Fatima Sukhra, she comes, she says, Abba Abdullah, let me hug my brother Ali Asghar one final time. She just wants to hug him one final time. He says to her, we have to leave. We have to go towards the battlefield. She says, one final time, I want to hug Ali Asghar. That's it. This one final time, she wants to hug Ali Asghar. She hugs him. Abba Abdullah says to her, we have to move towards the battlefield. We have to go now towards the battlefield. She, what he says, he says, Rabab, go and pick up Ali Asghar, your son. She tries to pick him up. She can't move him. Zainab, you go. She tries to take him, but she she can't even move him. Another group come. They want to pick him up. Abbas, he can't even take him from Fatima Sukhra. They say, Abba Abdullah, Abdullah al Radiya wouldn't move from Sukhra's hand. Abba Abdullah narrated to have come and he whispers in the ear of the six month old. The six month old suddenly moves because a baby loves to be attached to its father. It straight away moves and goes into the hands of Abba Abdullah. Abba Abdullah, he sits now on the tent of Muhammad. Haram. He looks one way and he looks the other. Having looked one way and having looked the other, brothers, there is this baby, it's coming towards us. It's coming towards us. Look, this is like the six month old baby, brothers and sisters. Look at it now. Look when a brother holds on to a baby. I leave it for you to wonder what Abba Abdullah goes through. Look at this baby as it's coming forward. At least this baby has got something which it could take some water from. Even, even the thing it sucks here, even this is it's got water. Abba Abdullah doesn't have any water to give Abdullah al Radiyah. Abba Abdullah is there. He is standing there. What does he do? He comes he, towards the tent. He, he looks one way. He sees Abu Fadl's body near the Euphrates with the hands cut apart. He looks towards the other way. He sees Ali Akbar with a chest which is wide open. He looks towards the third way. He sees Qasim's body mutilated in Karbala. Open your heart, Shia. This is 
sister, they you will receive shafa'a because of your tears for Aba Abdullah. He hears the child crying, groaning in the tent. He enters the tent, he sees Sayyidah Zainab holding the child. You know why? The mother couldn't continue to hold the child who she couldn't give any water to. Sayyidah Zainab took the child, Aba Abdullah, he looked towards the child. Having looked towards the child, just look at this child, brothers and sisters. Having looked towards the child, he says, Zainab, give me my greatest sacrifice of Karbala. Zainab says, Aba Abdullah, do you know this child doesn't cry anymore? He says, what do you mean? She says, this child only groans. He says, why? She says, because this child hasn't tasted any water for a time. All it does is groan and groan. He takes the child. Before he takes the child, as a mother should do, a mother comes and wraps up her child. Do you know she wraps up her child with a white cloth and then she puts what? She puts like a little turban on the child's head. Look at the child, brothers and sisters. She looks at the child. She puts a little turban on the head. She comes forward and she kisses the child one final time. Abba Abdullah takes the child from his mother. He comes towards the army of Omar bin Sa'ad. Having come towards this army, Abba Abdullah comes. He says, O oh, army of Omar bin Sa'ad, you want me? You want to kill me? Kill me. But this is only a six month old. Surely you are not cruel enough not to give it water? There is no reply. Abba Abdullah takes the child on the heat of Karbala. This child here is not feeling any heat. Imagine the dust of Karbala when it touches a child who is thirsty. The child is on the ground. There is one of the famous scholars. He says, Abba Abdullah says, come give him water. I'm not going to be near him anymore. But they even reject him there. And one of the scholars says, Abba Abdullah, he picked up the child. Why? Because he thought in himself, if Ismail's feet can strike a ground and some of them can come out. What happens if Ali Asghar's feet strike Karbala? What happens is he picks him up. He brings him back towards him. He holds him. He says, oh army of Omar bin Sa'ad, please give him some water. Omar bin Sa'ad looks around at his army and he says, strike this young man. Strike this child. Next to him is Harmala. Harmala has an arrow. Brothers and sisters, is it any type of arrow? Of course not. It's not any type of arrow. Harmala, when he used to strike an arrow, the arrow used to be used for cutting the neck of a camel. Anyone who has seen a camel will know how big the camel's neck is. Anyone who has seen a camel will know that a camel is born and it can control its thirst. Yet, Abba Abdullah, your child is only six months old. How is it meant to control its thirst? Harmala, at this moment, he comes with an arrow. At this moment, Abba Abdullah is looking at his child. Look at the child. He looks at his child. He looks at his child again. He notices the child's head goes one way and goes the other. He notices that blood begins to come in his hands on the plains of Karbala. He looks at blood. Suddenly, Abba Abdullah, they say his beard went gray. He suddenly got older at this moment. He said, Ya Allah, how cruel the people are they to come towards my son, this Abdullah, and Rabbi Ananawa, arrow to come inside him. It is narrated, he comes back towards the tent. He says, Inna lillah wa inna alayhi raja'oon. He goes back. He says, Inna lillah wa inna alayhi raja'oon. He returns a third time. Inna lillah wa inna alayhi raja'oon. He goes back a fourth time. He does this seven times, brothers and sisters. They ask him, Abba Abdullah, why do you come back four, seven times? He says, I don't know how to tell a mother that her baby's neck is pierced. I am Abba Abdullah in Karbala. It's a mother I can't explain to her how an arrow pierces her neck. It is narrated he digs the pit and the ground to bury the child. Do you know why, brothers and sisters? Because the chest of Ali, uh, the chest of Ali Asghar is not big enough to take the horses when they trample on a body. Nor is his head big enough to put on a spear on the way to Shab. So they bury him on the ground in both of these. Abba Abdullah now returns to the tent. He returns to the tent. He now bids farewell. Shia, come with me now on Abba Abdullah's final moments. Come with me now. What happens is, 
Abba Abdullah begins to bid farewell to everyone. He says to them and he calls out, Hal min nasirin yansurana, Hal min zabi yadubu ala harami rasulillah. What happens is Imam Zain al-Abideen had been in a state of unconsciousness. He wasn't able to listen. Imam Zain al-Abideen, he suddenly woke up. He heard the ladies crying. When Imam Zain al-Abideen, when he woke up, he said, where is my father? Let me see him. I want to go out onto Karbala and fight. His father looked at him. He said, Zainab, Zainab, calm him down. Zainab, hold him. He is the proof of God on earth. You must hold him. What happens is, Imam Zain al-Abideen, he says, Father, tell me what has happened while I have been unconscious. Where is my uncle Abbas that I can come and see him now? His father begins to cry. He says, Abu Fadl, his right hand and his left hand were severed near the Euphrates. He says, where is Qasim? He says, Qasim is down on the ground with his body mutilated. He says, Father, you love no one like Ali Akbar. Surely you can't live without Ali Akbar. Where is he? He says, Ali Akbar has been mutilated in the tent. He is here. And this moment he says, give me a sword and give me a stick. Sayyidah Zainab asks him why. He says, I want a stick so I can stand up and I want a sword so I can protect my father now. Abba Abdullah looks at him. Imagine brothers and sisters how difficult it is for Abba Abdullah. He looks at him. He says, my son, you are Allah's proof on earth and you are the protector of the orphans. You must remain patient. He 